Like Uncle Dane said, maps. I, I love, love maps. maps. Not these kind of maps. You're all weird. Community made maps are something that I always have appreciated. Because playing on official maps can get boring. In my last TF2 video, I talked about community servers and more vacuum maps. I kinda highlighted one map that I really think is one of the best custom maps there is, and that is DM underscore Mario Kart. But what made the map so much fun? I'll be looking through all versions of the map I could find in this video. The Mario Kart B2 V2 showed up in Game Banana 10 years ago. It's really old map, like very old. The map is really fun. It has several ways to get across the map, such as the cannon, speed pad, vehicles, and of course, the pipe system that we see in Mario games. The map has been designed as a fun sandbox where you can move fast across the map and find secrets. Did I mention secrets? Yes, I did. There are 16 gifts to be found in this map, which unlock a new part of the map. World 1-2 It's really cool side activity you can have in the map. Plus, the map is really colorful, which I also like. Now, this map is cool, but the newer version of the map is when it gets amazing. You got it! It's the Mario! DM slash Mario Kart 2 slash B3 is pretty much the same like the previous version, but with lots of improvements. It's pretty interesting how few tweaks can make a map better. It still has the same fun sandbox idea where you can collect the gifts, but this time it's even better. They made few changes like adding second ramp which makes things much more faster. They changed the skybox to more brighter color. And the biggest sense of all is the new 1-2 world. There was nothing wrong with the previous one, maybe being too small area, but they really improved it. Now having completely new section and this cool river down under it. Not only you can have this pretty neat stick with music and this microphone. <laughs> But you can also have the minigame area just as Crush Game and Pyro Tennis, if I'm correct on what this canon thing is. I did talk about much the different aspects of the map in the first version because I wanted to save them for here. East team has their own carts with pipes which you can drive around the map. Wait, the moment, you can drive? You're drunk! Oh god! This may seem pointless at first glance, but at spawn, when you enter a portal, you will pop out of the pipe which is part of the card. Not only it is nice to have it, it also functions as a quick access to the battlefield, making traveling the map even faster. But here's the catch. Enemy can move your card too to move it to unfavorable place, so you can make a decision to leave your card there and not bother with it and save some time now. Or move it to close to enemy's location which will get you instantly to action once you respawn. Now, as Laps of Physics would say, no opposite team can't enter enemy's pipes. Or can they? When you get out of spawn, you will most likely see a green pipe. Enter it, and you will enter a hub with all of available locations. Random 1-1 world portal, 1-2 world portal, blue or red tank, and pipe. And the door for 1-3. So there is that too, you know, it's pretty fun. You can enter enemy team's card through there, so you can catch the enemy off card if they don't expect enemy pop out of there. But you also get healed when you enter the pipe, so if you're ever hurt and you need to escape, just head onto the pipes. Speaking of 1-3, I remember just wondering how to access this portal. Now as older I realized it wasn't included in this version sadly. But gotta say, pretty cool teaser for a world when the creator updates the map. Can wait to see what does the world hold. Now the rooftops, the cannons and the speed pads are mainly for accessing the rooftops for all classes, but if you're cool you can just use the power plug to jump yourself up there quickly, and sometimes you can do cool shit like this with the cannon. Back to the rooftops. Each side has medium sized ammo pack and small medkit, and has covers. In the middle there's a giant medkit and an ammo pack, so you can decide so you try to pick it up or risk getting killed, or just wait until you're enough healed with the small medkit. I mean, come on, it's just basic TF2 stuff, but I just wanted to point that out. Fun fact about this map I wanna tell, normally you think you need to break these bricks to get your resources, well, you can just jump under it and you get the item you want. There's also the blimp, it's okay, like you don't really get anything from being there, and shooting from there is pretty hard, because of source engine handles moving objects and stuff. But one cool thing it has is the nuke, drop it down and you kill everything in certain area. It's totally overpowered and breaks the flow. Or does it? 
I'm gonna let you on a secret. You can actually hide from the explosion and not die. Just hide behind an object and you will survive just like that. As you can see, I survived the explosive with- Oh god, no! About the speed pads, there are dispensers for each team, so if you ever need some dispenser in your life, then you're in luck. Need the speed pads are bomb factories which make, you guessed it, bombs. Yeah, these are pretty pointless because you do need to be really accurate to set them up. And the blimp does better work because it has larger explosion area. There's the disco. It's fun if you want to party while being friendly. You can get there from either spawn site or from rooftops hitting this button and entering through the hole. I want to talk about 1-2 again. World 1-2 has this pool where you can play soccer or just be a pirate shark. There are dispensers too, so if you want to farm some points, you can set a sentry there. There is also a door where you can release H, H, H and fight him if you want. I think that covers pretty much everything. The reason why the map is so fun is because the fact you can go around the map very quickly. You got all these cool parts to make the gameplay fast paced. Reward for exploring the map and there's a lot of side content for just having fun. The issues with the map is that snipers can be pain if they can aim because of the open areas but you got some covers where you can hide from the sideline. And spam camping is pretty easy and can cause some issues but if you're good enough you can just move the cart or escape quickly to rooftops or build an uber. The map is packed just enough of stuff where it doesn't overwhelm you or make you feel underwhelmed. I'd say this is one of the best comedy maps out there. Now, what's of the next map is the positive case. Oh, do the Mario take one step and then again. DM slash Mario Kart 3 slash V1 is a remake of the previous versions of the map and just lacks a lot of the aspects that made it the others so memorable, like lack of other worlds. Remember World 1 2? It doesn't exist and neither does World 1-3. Really weird to remove something so unique that the betas had and not include them over here. I'm sure people would have loved to see the return in 1-2 world and brand new 1-3 world. Some things are still in the map from the beta like blim, speed bats, cannons and the pipe system. The pipe room has been changed and something about it bothers me and I don't know why. Perhaps it's the way Polos has been placed. Every portal is in one wall and there's a map showing where it takes. No bad idea, but because how things are placed, in heat you might not even remember which portal took you where. Compare that to other where it told you in bold text which portal it was and the team coloring, it made things easy to read and memorize and stuff, I don't know how to explain it. Also when entering through the pipe it doesn't heal you anymore so it isn't nearly as effective escape tactic as it was in beta. They included two warp pipes to each team side and remove cards which makes me really irritated because how cool it was to have them in this map and you know, have it named Mario Kart. Won't have made too much sense, I guess. The pretty cool thing they included are these towers where you can find power-ups from, just like in Mario games. Also, there are elevators and buttons. There's a lot of more ways to get to the rooftop. The rooftop is alright, I prefer the simple nature of it, but it's fine. There are also these springs that are pretty fun, and I like how you can access the rooftop from sides now with the blocks you activate with the big button. There are also more ways to get to the disco, like more stairs. Bounce has speed revamp, you have much more ways to get out of the spam, which is a pretty good fix to the spam camping issue. There is also a portal to the pipe system, which is also good. But I also hate it because it reminds me every time that cards has been removed. The nuke has been taken to the next level. Now where we will find the old world of the 1-2 is big nuke but behind a glass door, which open randomly during the game. When you press it, you need to escape to the disco because it's the only place where you can be safe. Also, you can't do cool shit like this anymore. As much as I like these aspects, I think the biggest issue about the map is because it honestly feels it has less quality aspects than the betas. The biggest rank of the beta versions of the maps were its quality aspects, and it was more simple. Like the cards, new world, and stuff. Now sure, there is more, but what they really do to the overall charm and gameplay. I really like the new stuff, but removal of the cards and worlds kinda removed the charm of the map and just make me feel underwhelmed. It just feels smaller in comparison despite having more features than the beta. The simplicity of the betas made them really fun maps because even if they didn't have the same amount of features like the remake, it had just enough fun features to make it fun and fast paced. That's why I think the previous verses were much more memorable than the remake. So in conclusion, the simple nature of the betas were the reason why they were fun deathmatch maps while having other side stuff. But I don't think the vinyl version is the worst. It has more issues, but it's still a pretty fun map. But compared to where it started, it's easy to see where it sidetracked. I will always appreciate the effort it went into making the map. 
but I will always prefer the betas more. The map hasn't been updated since 2013, so I think it's safe to say that this will be the final version we will ever get of the map. Thank you for watching this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed listening me to talk about some random map in TF2, and subscribe if you want to see more like this. Have a nice day everyone.